Hello and welcome to Europe PCR 2019. My name is Patrick Calvert from Cambridge in the United Kingdom and I'm joined here today by my friend and colleague Dejan Milenisivinovic from Belgrade in Serbia. Dejan, welcome. Thank you, Patrick. Welcome. We're here today to talk about rapid non-STEMI pathways. This is featured in the programme in Europe PCR 2019. Dejan, can I ask you first of all to tell us what a rapid non-STEMI pathway is and why it matters? Thank you very much for this question. Well, the, the point is that uh, non-STEMI patients are patients that actually, at the moment, are a very heterogeneous group. So what we need to do is find a solution for these patients so that they have better outcomes. The studies so far have shown that in non-STEMI patients that are considered high-risk patients, earlier intervention in the cat lab will bring better outcomes. Now the question is, how do we set up a system that will account for this knowledge that we have from the evidence? So rapid non-STEMI pathways are one of the solutions to achieve better outcomes in high-risk non-STEMI patients. And my question to you would be, is there a possibility to set up a systematic pathway for these kinds of high-risk, non-ST elevation, acute coronary syndrome patients? Absolutely, thanks Dejan. Well, to be honest with you, it's an area that we've been looking at for some time in, our, in the United Kingdom in general. And um, with the help of my colleagues, uh, all of my colleagues in our centre, and particularly Mike Davies and also uh, Michael Sullivan and Will Davies, we looked at our performance for non-STEMI patients generally and we find it lagged long behind the recommended guidelines. And if we're just clear about that, we're talking about the high-risk patients, and it is recommended they come from presentation to cath lab within 24 hours. We were doing much worse than that. So we looked at, first of all, our performance, and then secondly, what it would be that would be required to get us to a place where we could meet those guidelines. The first thing we had to do was improve our capacity. It's clear we didn't have the capacity that's required, and so we increased the number of lists that were available for those kind of patients. That's the first thing. Second thing, we spoke to our uh, stakeholders, our colleagues in the region. We talked to them about the idea of a pathway that triage patients at presentation. Mm -hmm. That means in the ambulance or indeed in the emergency rooms. And rather than being admitted to a general hospital that doesn't have a cath lab, mm -hmm. they would then be triaged. And if they were deemed high risk mm -hmm. according to the protocols, they would be admitted directly to the heart centre. Mm -hmm. And when they get to the heart centre, the idea is that they have their angiography within 24 hours of admission. So let me try to summarise. So basically we have, coming from the evidence, the need to go to the cat lab with these patients within 24 hours of presentation. To do that on everyday basis is not always possible. And we know that from our everyday practice and across Europe and around the world, it is a tough target to reach. So my question to you is, how does your system look like that you try to reach these uh, targets that are actually guideline recommended. So non-ST elevation, acute coronary syndrome patients that are deemed high risk and that have to go to the cat lab within 24 hours. It is difficult and I think the key is in patient selection. There are a number of ways this can be done, but it must be simple because the people referred into the pathway are usually not cardiologists and some are not doctors. There is a clinical assessment, an ECG assessment, a troponin if available, and there's a risk score. And we synthesize that information upon a simple protocol to bring them in. And we do also suggest they do not have excessive comorbidities. Mm -hmm. For the system to work, it has to flow. And if we have a, a hospital, a heart hospital, that's full of uh, patients who are unable to be discharged rapidly, then it would not work. So you described some of the challenges. Are there any other infrastructure and challenges to that? Because we all know that it is hard to do a very rapid, uh, very rapid pathway in non-STEMI patients to go with these patients very early in the, in, the, in the cat lab because we know that we have other patients like STEMI patients who are preferred to go to an early intervention. It's great that you mentioned that and what's really important is that when you design a pathway like this is you be sure that you protect your gold standard treatment which is a STEMI pathway. It must not be affected and it must not be diminished in any way until it remains alongside the high risk non-STEMI pathway. So that's a very important fact. And, and the way you achieve that is increase your capacity and the flexibility of working. One of the great uh, issues that is, uh, has been much debated is how you handle weekend working. Mm -hmm. uh, many cath labs, particularly smaller volumes, will not, elect, not have non-STEMI lists at the weekend. You sure. have to have the ability at least to treat the higher risk patients at the weekend. 
that requires a greater degree of flexibility for working. And so for some of our interventions, it means more disturbed weekends, I'm afraid. And to wrap it up, so what would you consider the main advantages, the main benefits of a rapid non-STEMI pathway? Well, I mean, there are two main advantages as far as I see it. And we have only been running ours for six months, so we're still getting used to the idea and we're improving our system. The first major benefit is for patient outcomes. We have seen uh, patients who previously waited a number of days, they're coming to the cath lab quickly, and in time, it's preventing patients having infarcts in the referring hospitals while they're waiting. And that's reflected in the data. So there is clinical benefit, that's the most important thing. But there is also a benefit to the whole system. There is a clear and very easy demonstrable benefit in length of stay for the patient. They have much shorter length of stays, which saves money for the healthcare systems. And there are fewer ambulance trips because now some of the patients come from home to the heart center. So just to summarize, clinical benefit and benefits also to the whole healthcare system. Thank you very much. So, Thank you for joining us here today on PCR TV. In conclusion, rapid non-STEMIs are guideline mandated. They are a real challenge to set up, but if you can get it right, it will bring benefits to both your patients and to your healthcare systems. Thank you for joining us today.